uh, in this video, we will be accelerating the FIR filter using pink architecture. We'll start by creating our project. Click next, choose our project name. Select the location of our project. Click next. We do not need to specify sources. Click next. And we need to choose our board. We will be using the pink Z2 board. The board files will be attached in the GitHub repository. Click like that, click next, and then finish. Under the IP integrated tab, you have to create a block design. Name the design whatever you see fit and then click OK. And we have to add our Zinc processing system. So we click the plus tab, search for the Zinc, add that. We have to run block automation. Click on that and click OK. Next, we have to add our FIR compiler. Search for the FIR compiler. Just add that. Okay, next we have to double click on our FIR compiler. And we need to paste our specific coefficient vector for this task. That will be added in the attaching docs. Next, we have to go to the uh, uh, channel specifications. Choose the number of chances one and go down to sampling frequency and clock frequency and choose both of them to be 100. This enables us to get an input and an output for each clock uh, edge. So for every input, we'll get one output and we'll just see that load. Next in the implementation, we have to go down to data path options, manually select the input data width and choose that to be 32. And we, as we want the output to be 32, we have to option, we have to choose our output rounding mode uh, and we can choose the output rounding mode to be non-symmetric rounding up. As if we can see with 32 bits as input, we get 40 bit, 48 bits as output. And with non-symmetric rounding up, we can choose that to be 32. Next, we have to go to And here we need to enable T ready. We also need to enable T last. T last needs to be enabled by packet framing. And now that we have set up the uh, FI compiler, we can just click on okay. Everything else seems to be good. Next, we have to add our AXI DMA. So search for the AXI DMA. Let me just double click on the AXI DMA to set this up. First, we will disable scatter gather engine. And then we will make the width of the buffer possible. So in this case, that is 30, 26. And everything else seems to be uh, as we wanted to. And then we click on OK. We have to connect our FIR compiler to our AXI DMA. We'll start by the M access data and we connect that to the uh, in slave port. So this slave port converts the stream to memory map. And similarly, we connect uh, AXI S from memory map to stream. So this enables us to convert the memory map uh, interface inside the AXI to a stream interface that is much more recognizable with the FI compiler. So next we will have to, next we will enable a specific port on our zinc processing system. This is called the high performance zinc, uh, high performance port of a zinc processing system. It is the bottom green color. Just double click on that. This zinc high performance port enables us to directly uh, interface with the a DDR memory that is present on the zinc processing system. 
we can just enable any one of the HP ports. We have enabled HP zero, and yep, that should how that should be the design. And then we can just click on run automation. So if we click on run automation, everything, all the AXI light ports should be connected. This is what your design should look like for verification. And then now for convenience, we are going to rename the FIR compiler. This FIR compiler will be helpful by renaming the FIR compiler right now. It will be helpful when we are using, when you are going to use these specific block diagrams in the uh, Jupyter part of our design. We'll name the FI compiler FIR and the DA and the DA, DMA FIR underscore DMA. And now we will also create a hierarchy of both our FIR and our FIR DMA. And we can just right click on both of them selected, click on create hierarchy, choose the hierarchy to be called filter and click on select. Now we can just run block or uh, run connection automation again for any other ports that might be left out. And now this should be the design. We can just validate a design to check if there are no errors. There were no errors. Now we can now we can make our wrapper. So we have to go and create HDL wrapper. We can let Vivado manage and update. Okay, next we have to export our block design so that Pink may later read it. So we go to File, Export, Export Block Design. Click on OK. This will just make the block design in the, the directory that we chose. And next we will generate our bit stream. And then this may take some time. So as it's generating. Okay, now that the bitstream has been successfully generated and completed, we will go to the file explorer to retrieve all the files that we need to upload to our pink port. Go to the location. Here you will find the TCL file that we exported from earlier. Then we go to this dot sources, sources underscore one, BD, BD, then we go to the filter file. And then here go to the HWH handoff and here you'll find the HWH file. This file is needed so that Vivado correctly interprets the uh, bitstream that we upload. Just paste that into one convenient location. And now, okay, now we need to go to the bitstream. Now we go to run. Here we go to uh, implementation and we can here we can just search for the bit file. So just copy and paste this into the convenient location. And now we will just upload all of this to our uh, pink notebook. So after opening up your pink notebook, we'll just create a new folder. We'll just create a new folder. Right. Open that and just click on upload. Okay, now we need to upload our bit files. Here we have all our bit files stored. We'll just upload the HWH, the .tcl, and the .bit file. Now that everything's uploaded, we need to create a new Python live notebook. Okay, so here what we have just written, all the code is uploaded on the GitHub and in the drive of, uh, attached. So the first uh, block basically imports the matplotlib mat mat uh, library. This is just used to uh, plot our functions. And in the second block, we've just uh, defined our input function. So the input function just be a cosine wave, add cosine wave, both of them are uh, operating on different frequencies. So if we just run these two, we can just run these two and then we can just see our input. As we can see, the input is not that uh, of a clean file. It, is, it's, uh, it has a bit of uh, constructive interference, destructive interference. So now we need to create a filter to uh, retrieve the original signal. So what first we'll do is we'll design the software implementation, test the software implementation, and then compare that to the hardware implementation that we just made. 
ठीक है ओके सो लाइन बाय लाइन आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन व्हाट दिस कोड डज सो फर्स्टली वी आर इंपोर्टिंग द एल फिल्टर फंक्शन फ्रॉम द साईपाई लाइब्रेरी दिस विल एल फिल्टर इज बेसिकली द फिल्टर दैट अलाउज अस टू परफॉर्म द एफ आई आर फंक्शन द कोएफिशिएंट्स आर द सेम कोएफिशिएंट्स दैट वी डिफाइंड अर्लियर वी आर जस्ट इंपोर्टिंग अ टाइम मॉड्यूल सो दैट वी कैन ट्रैक हाउ लॉन्ग दिस एंटायर प्रोसीजर टेक so our start time is just time dot time we're just starting the time and then the software fir output is being uh, retrieved so we just pa- to the end filter will pass the number of the coefficients may vector that we made uh, previously then the total number of samples and then the samples themselves the samples themselves were created in the previous block after that entire procedure happens we'll just stop our time and just check the software execution time so now we can just run this and you can plot the output that we get uh to the plot to notebook function that we had made earlier and here as we can see this is working as we expected we have our original sign function again and we can see that the software implementation took 0.095 seconds so now we'll move to the hardware implementation and we'll see how our hardware uh, fir implementation uh, stack in comparison we will just have to rename our fir filter underscore wrapper dot bit so essentially all three files have to have the same name in order for ping to recognize it correctly so here all of them are just being called fir underscore filter so here we have the hardware implementation that we're going to use so from the ping package we're implementing the overlay function this overlay function allows us to read the bit files that we have created in vivardo and use them in ping and then we are implementing uh, we are importing a ping dot uh, we are implementing a dma so this as we use the dma in our vivardo uh, block dis- block diagram design we have to import a similar function that will do help us to send and receive our buffers that we will uh, shortly make so the next uh, step is the overlay function so here the uh, majority of the address will look the same it will be home xilinx jupyter notebooks and then that may change depending upon what your uh, folder is so if you have created a stationary folder so that will be your first folder and then we just have to import our fir uh, bit stream that we created so that is done using the overlay function and then we will just load our dma from the fir that we had made so remember when we made the fir filter we had uh, blocked both of them into the filter one filter we had in that filter we had the fir compiler and the fir dma so here we are just loading the dma using uh, overlay filter is the hierarchy that we had made and then the fir dma was the uh, name that we had given to the dma all of this runs fine and then we will move to the next part so here we are importing an xlnk function uh, from the ping package the xlnk function allows us to make buffers to allocate memory in ping so here we are just uh, making a buffer of size n n was the size that we had used earlier we defined it earlier in our uh, code and we're making a we're making the data type of them um, uh, 32 bits so we've created an in buffer and an out buffer and now we will copy our samples into the in buffer using the np.copy to function and now again we will just import time to uh, track and benchmark how much time our new F, uh, fir filter uh, takes so we'll start time and then this step is crucial we have to send the channel a transfer so we'll first send our in buffer we'll receive our in buffer using the recv channel dot transfer and we'll trans we'll receive the out <clears throat> out buffer and then we'll wait for both the send channel and the receive channel to uh, to finish the transactions cv this is one correction we have to make one of them has to be recv and the other one has to be send and then we can just stop our entire execution as all the transactions have been completed not doing the send and receive channel waits will uh, result in faulty output and garbage values so here we can just run this entire thing and make sure that all of this is works and we'll see what our final execution time and the amount of improvement that we got with comparison to the software implementation as we can see we got 25 times faster performance 
in comparison to the software implementation. This clearly shows that our FIR filter that we had made in hardware is much, much faster than the one that you could use in software. And as you can see that this and the previous uh, graph are all the same on the same. That concludes this tutorial for implementing an FIR filter using Pink and the Jupyter Notebook. Thank you.